Today, we're going to be counting down 50 of the best base spots in Day Z. I'm going to cover some of the most popular spots to the sneakiest, most overpowered, and simply most effective base locations across Chernarus. So, whether you're looking for your next base location or a juicy raid target, you're not going to want to miss today's video. There's a base in this video for everyone, from solos to small groups to the massive clans. Let's first start with a church base. They come in three different variations and are located all across Chernarus, and with one or two entrances, they're super cheap to secure. With nearly one in every town, you can build it wherever suits your playstyle. You can even fit a car in there. I want to specifically highlight the church by Devil's Castle. With the castle to the west and two separate summer camps less than 2,000 meters away, there's no problem getting your hands on hunting and medical supplies. And not to mention, it's less than a 15 minute run from Northwest Airfield or Kamenx military base. And if you find the Devil's Church is already taken, there's a similar one at the other side of Serograd. For those who prefer a more quiet playstyle, there's a perfect green moustache house tucked away in the woods just south of Gorka. With just one wall, you can secure this base and hopefully no one will bother you for a while, though I do recommend boarding off the windows. An even sneakier location is located in the woods just north of Gorka, a lone barn in the middle of the woods. It doesn't even have a road, so good luck to whatever raiders find this. This isn't even the sneakiest location on our list, so you're going to want to make sure you watch the entire video. Our next location is perfect for small groups, a tech building. I like the one located on Komarova docks as it's close to both Pavlova military base and the Blota airfield. With a few gates you can secure this entire building and it's pretty big with multiple floors. Do be aware though with enough players that you can boost up the side and onto the roof so make sure you have this locked off as well. My most preferred group location is the Clock Tower, located up north in the town of Novo. With two gates, you can secure the entire staircase, and with just a few more, you have yourself a fortress, not to mention the best penthouse view in the city. And it couldn't be a top base location video without my personal favourite, the small shed located just north of Cherno. Now these sheds are located everywhere and make for a perfect solo starter base. With one gate, you can wall off the shed, where you can fit a car and a decent amount of storage. This location is perfect as it's off the beaten track, but close enough to Cherno to be able to easily be gear after to die in. Another great location for these types of sheds is the one located near Devils, but they're literally everywhere, so pick which one you like the most. And if these low key small bases locations are your kind of thing, there's a perfectly hidden red house just southeast of Gorka, which can be secured with just two walls. But for those who prefer a hectic PvP lifestyle, our next location is situated just next to Tissy, a single barn located on a plateau that looks over Sinistar, which people rarely head up to. It's close enough to Tissy to get involved in all the action and has a great vantage point to take control over the town of Sinistar. If this isn't big enough, there's many of these large industrial blue door warehouses located in Cherno, Nova and Navaya. These are great for clans as you can lock them off with just a few walls and you quickly have yourself an enormous base and it even comes with roof access. One of the most overpowered base locations on Chernarus has to be the castles. With only six located across the map, it's important you secure these quickly. Located north of Kamishovo, north of Novi Sobor, west of Lopatino, west of Moglevka and west of Krasnostav and of course Devils itself. Place one door at the base of the tower and you quickly have yourself a very strong base. And with the addition of castle interiors in a recent update, there's even more space to place more loot or additional gates. But before we go any further, a quick word from today's sponsor, War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made and is available now for free on PC, Xbox and PlayStation. Take command of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships of 10 major nations ranging from biplanes and armoured cars of the 1920s to fighter jets and the main battle tanks of today. Immerse yourself in the intense combat of War Thunder, where incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics and authentic sound effects place you right at the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. My personal favourite feature is the in-depth customization, featuring a comprehensive system with countless camouflages, historical marks and decorations for all types of vehicles. Join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles today and delve into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder. With an unmatched wealth of high quality content to discover, there's simply no better game suited for fans of military history. You can sign up to War Thunder using my sign up link in the pinned comment or video description. New and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver loins and 7 days of premium account. It's available for a limited time only so be quick. The strongest location on Chernarus has to be Prison Island. You can secure this entire prison with just one gate at the front entrance and not to mention it has hundreds of rooms and corridors which you can add additional fortifications to. It even has its own built in sniper tower and with it being located on an island it's super easy to defend from attackers. The only downside being there's no fresh water on the island and you can't drive cars over to it. 
For solos, there's a small granny house tucked away near Belota. With one gate, you can secure this to have a low-key small little hideaway. The same concept can be applied to the house south of Mister, but this also comes with one of those large sheds which you can lock off to turn into a garage. Literally any piano building, and I mean this, these buildings are a favourite of the Daisy community and they're located everywhere. One gate at the bottom of the stairs and the entire upstairs is yours, and with three entrances on the ground floor, it makes it a challenge to door camp. My favourite piano location is that on Pavlovo Farm, and to be honest, any building in the general southwest section of the map is great, located off the beaten path but close enough to Zelenogorsk and Pavlovo military base. But if you're looking for something really low key, Paradise Island is one of your best bets. There's no buildings here, so you'll have to build your own standalone base, but that's one of its strengths. No one has any reason to come here. If you fancy the island life, but don't fancy a standalone base, the neighbouring island of Scalicity is perfect, with a handful of houses to choose from, it even has a well, and there's little reason for people to venture here. Another low traffic location are these tall industrial buildings, and I'm not sure what most players even know you can enter these, but a gate at the bottom and a wall at the top to lock off the ladder, and you have yourself a sneaky little hideout with a great vantage point. Now, there isn't many of these located across the map, but I do know that there's one by Solnitchi, one in Novo, and another in Navaya. With a view over Mishkino Industrial is a wooden tavern which makes for a great solo base location. Two walls and you have the secure and with it being so close to debug it's very quiet but it's still close enough to Mishkino Military when you want some of that wall important action. Just north of this location is another wooden cabin which can be secured with just one wall and this is only a short run from Lopatino Evac. Now I can't mention the northwest without mentioning the Biathlon Tunnel, a perfect location if you're trying to set up an underground base. With two walls at either end you can lock this location off for yourself though I do recommend trying to incorporate some towers so it's easier to defend. But the easiest to defend bases have to be apartment bases. With apartments located in Electro, Cherno, Berezino, Serograd, Novo and Nabaya, there's plenty of options for you to choose from. Again, one gate at the bottom and the entire building is yours. Although you can add more gates to each floor to further secure it, putting your best loot at the top. Just remember, people can get through the windows and if they're skilled enough, they can even perform this little trick. And make sure you wall off the roof as a lot of people forget about this, and you can jump between some apartments if the raiders build a watchtower. Another popular and strong base location are schools. Perfect for large groups as there's so many rooms, there's even a really large gym which can be secured with just two walls, and you can easily wall off the entire school to form your own little compound, but there's only a limited amount of these on Chernarus, located in Barazino, Cherno, Electro, Serograd and Navaya. Tucked away by Sari Yar is a hidden tavern which makes a great solo location for those who want to explore the north. Just northeast of this is a Starry Timber Yard, a great place to get building resources, but also a great place to take over with a piano building and a large tin barn. East of Mogilevka is a shed hidden in the woods which can be secured with two walls to create a secret hidden base, which is close enough to the coast to re-gear, but also inland enough to be close to some action. If you want a really small and unique base, you can try walling off a container for a tiny base or you can try walling off some of the gaps that multiple containers form. Any fortress house makes a great base location, it's literally in the name, a fortress. Easy to hold in the event of a raid and very easy to secure with just a couple gates, where you can add further layers to increase protection. The top room is quite small but big enough for a solo or a small group. A surprisingly unknown location is this log cabin south of Kamishovo, a perfect starter base as no one really heads here, secure it with one door and you can leave some supplies for your next respawn down on the coast. If this is too obvious, there's another island just off the coast of Electro with nothing more than a lighthouse on, perfect for burying stashes of loot to recollect as a fresh spawn. Again, further west are an additional two small islands just off the coast of Cherno which makes for a great base location. Although, if you want something that's actually going to be a challenge to raid, office buildings are very overpowered. Located in most major cities, you can simply wall off the bottom and top of the stairs, and then fill a corridor full of gates and secure your loot in the back room. Though I do admit, it can be a little bit tricky to place the walls here on vanilla. Now, I can't do a base location video without mentioning caves. This location works best on modern servers as you can be way more creative, but you can kind of pull it off on vanilla. There's literally no reason to head here, so your base should remain pretty hidden. For an even sneakier location, there's a smaller cave a bit further up which I like to call the Eagle Nest. But if you want to be in the heart of the action, Bible Industrial is your best bet, with a massive factory that can be taken over with a few walls and it's located right next to Northwest Airfield and VMC. This is a very popular clan location and it's not uncommon to see multiple of these connected together. Not a personal favourite of mine, but I've just seen so many bases here that I had to mention it. I prefer low-key bases and this lone house in the Novilog field is perfect. Not many people visit here and with the summer camp to the west, it's pretty easy to keep your base well stocked. The same thing can be said for the Novi Lug Swamp, I really want to build a standalone base here so if you want to see a video on that let me know, but it's located just down the hill from Black Mountain and in my opinion it's one of the coolest locations on the list. Q 
keep into the theme of building in water, you can build really hidden bases under bridges, but though do keep in mind that there will be a lot of traffic over the top of your base, but if you're down to be the troll under the bridge, this can be a really interesting way to play DayZ. If you fancy living under a bridge, but don't fancy getting your toes wet, a dam base is a great alternative, and you can build a small little base in these gaps pretty easily. On the smaller dams, you can even hide wooden crates in these little slits. Or maybe you don't even need a base, you could just be a nomad, you could build these camouflage shelters pretty easily out of sticks and rope and hide them in a patch of trees. Alternatively, you can stash barrels and crates in trees or bodies of water. Another great idea is to just live in your car, it's pretty risky but very convenient as you now have a portable base that you can hide anywhere. One of my favourite off-grid locations is this cliff base on the mountain in between Cherno and Electro. It doesn't look like much from the coast but if you head up the mountain there's actually a flat patch in the middle where you can build some cool standalone bases. This radio tower by Krasenstab was the first ever base location I built in DayZ. With two walls you can wall off this shed and then with an additional two walls you can wall off this entire compound which you can park a car in. It even comes with its own little tower that you can climb to check out Krasenstab. Perfect for a solo. But if you want to build a really big base, Ovalet's factory is your best bet. A half constructed building which leaves so much up to the imagination. I've seen some behemoths of bases built in this over the years and it's not too hard to pull off as it actually spawns a bunch of base building loot around it. If you're really into PvP, you can take over the bunker at Bash or Tissy to store loot in as you PvP, although this base should be temporary as I imagine it won't last very long, but this could be really fun to PvP out of for a few days, especially if you angle a group into online raiding you. Not to mention that these bunkers are really strong, with a few gates it would be very difficult to raid. If you want a really cool and unique base, the ruins south of Saragino are perfect. With high walls from the compound, you can secure this with the addition of four more walls. And by being creative with watchtowers, you can create a pretty cool base. And as it doesn't spawn any loot, there's little reason for people to come up here. The other side of Saragino is a ruined barn, and again, with a bit of creativity, you can create something really cool here. It even has a great view over the Northern Highway if you want to do some sniping, a pretty popular route for survivors. But if you really want a good sniping position, you should build on Triple Yellow, with four located on a map, with two in both Novo and Cherno. These buildings are only accessible by a ladder, and you can either secure the roof and build a sniper nest of your dreams, or secure the lesser known room on the lower floor. Ultra Radio Station is a great place to build a base, especially on more friendly servers, as you can use a radio station to broadcast a radio signal across the entire map. It only takes three walls to secure, but with all the windows, you're definitely going to want to get them boarded off. And again, with it being located in the centre of the map, it's very convenient. And our final base spot is the sneakiest, place wooden crates inside of chicken coops. If you didn't know about this trick, you do now and you should be checking every chicken coop you come across to see if it's stuffed with someone's loot. Once again, I'd like to thank War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to use my link in the video description to play for free on either PC, PlayStation or Xbox. New and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms including multiple premium vehicles and other goodies available for a limited time only so make sure you don't miss it. So what was your favourite location or do you have something better of your own? If so, I'm interested in reading your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, you'll definitely like this one, so give it a watch if you haven't already. 